Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I have an interesting uh, diversion from my normal course of videos in which I normally am out and about in the world, but I, I figured uh, I'd, I'd share a bit of history in the physical sense rather than talking about something that either is hidden behind the walls of a tomb or abandoned out in nature. It's something more delicate, quite literally so. So today I have the uh, volume 36 of the Advocate and Register from Rahway, New Jersey, which was published on Friday morning on February 28th. 1851. It's interesting to have something that's so old yet so fragile. I found this in a box of old books and magazines which I'll probably share at some point because a number of them could have some uh, interesting historical value but none were as old as this artifact. Most of the books and magazines were from the uh, 1930s, and I believe a few from the 1920s, and then more and more were from the 60s onward. But this uh, was in the bunch. I came into possession of the box with all the documents, and this one in particular uh, helping family members move and they didn't want the box. They had bought it from a neighbor who had moved out, who had collected various uh, things from what I understand. And this was just in the mix with it. What's really interesting about this newspaper is all the various things that seem so modern, at least for their time, yet so outdated or commonplace today, or even going beyond that, as they say, hindsight is 2020, and there are allusions to events that would take place decades after this public, uh, newspaper was published that they wouldn't have known. But yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, overall it's a fascinating look at the past, uh, looking at the various ads that have been posted and the uh, articles that were written. I have to be very delicate. As as you can see, I just have my normal hands. I don't have any of these uh, fancy museum gloves that are typically uh, preferred when handling old documents. And you can see this newspaper <laughs> has certainly seen better days uh, with the stains and it's just torn up all over. As you can see, the where it's been folded for decades, if not over a century. Uh, <laughs> it's caused the paper to tear and break apart, and uh, I think the camera can pick it up, but just down here where someone's managed to, I don't know if that's paint or uh, some sort of tape, but either way, uh, I, I have to be very delicate with the way I handle this. Uh, artifact really. Um, so I'm going to pause the video and we can look at uh, some articles a little closer. So this first article I want to point out is an interesting one uh, related to steam travel which uh, was a relatively new technology. I don't want to say completely new. It had been around for quite a while uh, so far as I'm aware. Um, I think like around the 1840s or so it started to come around but you got to remember in 1850s uh, America, it was certainly not uh, commonplace as it would be a few decades later, or even a single decade later. Um, but this Dr. Uh, Lardner that the article is about uh, apparently has written a book about how the uh, likelihood of being killed or injured while traveling along uh, on a steam-powered vessel or train or steam power in general he notes that the loss of life has only 
uh, the loss of life has been only 1 to 14,661. Equal to going around the world nearly 600 times. And uh, someone's only as uh, 1 to 7,350,738. Or about 300 times around the world of... Uh, that statistic is for uh, getting injured, I believe. Yeah, injury. So he's basically showing the extremely low percentages that one would ever get killed or injured while traveling along uh, with a steam-powered vehicle and assuring their safety, saying, like, you know, it, it's like basically winning the lottery, which is it's an interesting way of defense of steam-powered vehicles because, like I said, uh, how new the technology was, there was certainly a lot of uh, Luddites, or people who distrusted steam power, or were completely caught up in sensationalized uh, news stories of horrible disasters that occurred on ships and railways, of exploding trains, or excuse me, exploding ships and crashing trains. Um, in relation to that, after he goes through the various percentages, he notes that uh, it will be perceived that trains running out of their usual time are less safe than regular trains, and that a passenger's safety depends much on his being always in his place and in due time. Now there's what looks like a comma, so it, or no, that's period. But it almost sounds like, uh, <laughs> it's almost, uh, the passenger's safety relies more on his ability to make sure he's in the right place at the right time more than it is the railway's problem. No, but it, it was a serious issue that many people were concerned about at the time. It's 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 an interesting look, though. Like, uh, I guess a modern equivalent that one might think of would be how uh, AI cars are viewed nowadays, how... Uh, dangerous and sensationalized they may be viewed by some but how they may be the future to others you know who knows what uh, 10 years time will bring with that and with that I'd like to bring up the next very interesting article so going along with the theme of what might come in 10 years time so this was uh, as I noted in the beginning published in 1851 and one article I found that really intrigued me was this uh, one about this Bishop Carpers who went to South Carolina um, basically concerned um, well I'll just read it out and then I'll discuss it so at least the best of my ability you can see that with the way the newspaper is uh, creased I don't want to tear it or break it, so I just kind of left it as is. So there's one part that's kind of hard to read, but... Bishop Capers, a prelate of great talent and patriotism, has published an address to the people of that state, South Carolina, against any attempt to secede from the Union. He shows beyond doubt the danger and destruction to the state which would inevitably follow such a step. The ending line, I find... As I <laughs> stated before, hindsight is twenty twenty. but still, the, the final line of this uh, article, the South never can or will unite in such a step, a uh, step being seceding or rebellion. Of course, just about nine years after this was published, they did just that. So it's, it's an interesting thing where, in, at that time, it would have seemed so impossible and so crazy. And this uh, is specifically referring to the people of South Carolina. I'm sure there was probably similar sentiments in other southern states as would be proved further down the line, but it's interesting to think that there was already the fears so, so, so early, uh, especially when in history classes I feel like antebellum America is usually taught to some extent, but it's almost always taught in a way where it's like, oh, well, 
Uh, there was slavery in the South, and then Lincoln was elected, and then there was Civil War. You know, it's small moments that are relegated to tiny little articles that go relatively unseen in an otherwise condensed newspaper. These small little moments tend to get passed over and forgotten and we only look at the bigger picture and wider scope of everything going on. We tend to miss the early warning signs, I suppose, is what I'm getting at. In the sense of the history sense, I suppose, you can look at it as you, you always need to expand your horizon and go beyond just the big names, the big generals and leaders and uh, people who did notable things, while they still are important, um, focusing solely on them ignores a whole history of events that led up to how they became famous, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, and then in our own times, it makes you contemplate on what major events will fizzle out. We view them as major because they are modern and what major events we think will never rear their ugly heads again as this bishop believed. What events will fester and spring up and strike with bloody violence only a decade later. Who can tell? Hindsight, it's 2020. I just think this whole newspaper is neat. But on to lighter subjects. I found this ad particularly interesting. I assume... Nope. Various musical instruments, I assume for sale. Um, new music in general. And then the particular line that I wanted to point out that I thought was kind of interesting, the wording... Oh, if I can get my camera to cooperate. The citizens and strangers are invited to call, examine, and purchase. Just the word, the citizens and strangers, like I get the, like it's some Roman orator, like citizens of Rome, come you our musical instruments. I don't know, I just thought it was a funny word choice. Very pompous. Then just above that we have uh, doctors proclaiming to have the cure-alls for all these hysterical women that are about. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't laugh, it was, uh, I laugh in the sense of how ridiculous it is in the modern sense, but hysteria, fainting fits, an extreme, what is that, nervous sensibility. Oh boy. I just also wanted to quickly point out, though I'm not going to read it uh, right now or summarize it at the moment, uh, just that the main article, at least the one that's taking up the main front page, is about the a few Americans, presumably, who live in the area where this, uh, in Rahway, New Jersey, who, uh, went to Rome on a grand tour, and are basically writing about what, all the experience and whatnot, um, perhaps, uh, in the future, near future, whenever I get the time, I could probably try and read through it, and, uh, read type it out on the computer and just kind of reread it. I wouldn't want to do it here on camera because that would be long and strenuous and then also as I mentioned earlier this big you know crease down the center would be very difficult to deal with so I, I wouldn't want to do that on camera but it'd be interesting. Um, it would be very very difficult and I'm sure a lot of things would get lost in translation because of the way the paper has been damaged over the over the years. I know this isn't the most exciting video, but I just also wanted to show off various aspects of it, just, I, there's so much, I don't want to be too boring in this video, so I just didn't want to be reading off random articles, but, I mean, you can just see, just, passing through, I guess you could pause it at various points, just to get tidbits, but I 
it's just very fascinating in my opinion <laughs> um, I suppose I'll go on and kind of look at the ads this is the inner part of the first page and you'll kind of see over here I have to very gingerly uh, very delicately uh, deal with the paper I just don't want to tear it so I'm just you ever get a piece of paper like soaking wet it, like you spill a drink on it or something on accident that's how this feels and it's completely dry it's like any wrong move will completely destroy it so you have to be ask you at least I feel like that's all it is it's normally this is kept in a safe place where nothing touches it here on the back page we can see more of the various ads you'd see from sarsaparilla a cure-all as you can see from all the various things <laughs> it just goes on and on you know fire insurance can't but yeah overall you just uh it's interesting seeing it, what various other things are being uh, advertised. And all the various interesting like little pieces of artwork. You know, it's interesting. Also, the font is also very interesting. I know that sounds like a, a weird thing to talk about, but... I don't know. I'm sure there's people like me out there who find at least some interest in historic uh, typeface and all that. So yeah, this video probably won't be super long just because I didn't want to focus too intently on just reading, uh, you know, an old newspaper, so to speak. Uh, just checking it out uh just uh you know discovering a little piece of american history that's you know uh i won't say overlooked i mean i meant this newspaper specifically being overlooked being you know put in a box covered by other documents and other books um and it's just you know a time capsule of what was going on you know, in the country, partly in the world, um, what was new, what was coming, and life for the people of Rahway, New Jersey, on Friday morning in 1851. It's very interesting. I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this, uh, little calmer and quieter I hope quieter I don't know <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it uh thanks for watching